Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Out Workshop. Today I'm going to make a series of four unions for the stars. So we're going to be doing a production run, and I'm also going to show you that you can stop easel in the middle of a carve, make a correction in the software, and start again. Well, let me show you how we're doing it. Let's get started. Today I'm making four unions for my flags, and these unions are going to be 13 by 10 and a half inches. And what I'm doing here is cutting the premium pine board down to size just to be able to make it manageable to be able to handle. And then from there I'm measuring exactly the 13 inches because I want this to be as exact as I can possibly get it. And once I have the measurement done, then I go ahead and cut all four of the unions. Now with all the unions cut the length, it's time to reset up the saw to be able to cut the other dimension. And this is going to be 10 and a half inches. And again, I'm checking to make sure that the edges are very crisp and sharp. Again, I want to be able to have this as perfect as I can possibly get it. With this set, now I just go ahead and cut all four of the unions to the proper size. And again, this is the 10 and a half inches. I've already cut the 13 inch side. Now it's on to staining. I've got my little stand set up to be able to hold the material once I get it stained. And I'm just using the brush and staining these four unions so I get a nice, even, consistent color. Once I have both sides stained and they're looking really good, I just set them over on my stand that I had made and had shown you in another video, and I will move on to the next one. After a few minutes of staining and get them all looking really good, it's time to just be able to set them up and let them dry. Now that all of them are dry, it's time to torch the uh, unions, and this just takes a few minutes, but you need to make sure that the stain is completely dry. So again, what I have shown in other videos, the torching process is very similar to painting. You have to be able to take your time, move at a consistent speed, and work your way left or right across the field. And one of the most important things is actually go off of the union so you don't create hot spots on the ends. I actually like to be able to turn around and do the same process in the opposite direction. And that really has to do with how the flame does the burning of the wood. And it does leave for a very nice consistent look. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Now it's time beginning carving. And I'm doing this in the time lapse so it goes much faster. But what you will notice is I started carving and I stopped it. I did not like the depth of the stars. So I stopped it, changed the depth in easel, and then I began the carving again. And yes, it does do a little bit of air carving on the first part of the stars, but that's not a big deal. Having the X, Y, zero exactly where it needs to be in the center made it where I can stop and start to carve if I need to, as I did in this case, without any problems whatsoever. Now you also notice that I'm using the bump stops. The bump stops make it where it's very, very easy to switch from one union to the next union and maintain the exact same X, Y, zero point. So I don't have to set the X, Y axis each and every time. What I do is make my move from the center point and I move the machine up eight inches, go ahead and swap out the uh, union, clamp it back down. Only thing I have to do is use the Z probe and I'm ready to carve again because I know I moved it exactly eight inches up. I move it eight inches back and I'm ready to carve. Now that it's secure, I just simply jog the machine back to eight inches and it brings it right back exactly to my X, Y, zero point, which is my home position for this particular project for each of the four unions. The only thing that I need to do is do the Z probe, 
to be able to have that set where it needs to be and then I'm ready to be able to carve. So with that done, then it goes ahead and starts to carve on the next one and that does save a little bit of time. And I get the second uh, union and I continue this process through the third and fourth union. This just shows how I set up the machine with the center point on the center of the stars. For this project, I used the easel to be able to carve these stars. Even though it takes a little bit longer, I think the actual star looks a little bit better. It's more crisp than using the G-code that I've used in the past for the stars. And here's a look at all four of them completed. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.